what is going on it's alex coming back at you with another video and today we're gonna be doing a way too early 2026 nfl mock draft so if you are new feel free to like comment and subscribe i do content like this all the damn time well not this this is the first one of the season which i'm super excited for and it's a continuation of my most recent mock draft with trades i only did one round for it but i felt so guilty that I actually did a rounds two and three during my little Thanksgiving extravaganza with my parents and um, well, didn't record it, but I ended up actually putting it in this video. So let's get into this um, and let's get started out. The draft order is relatively arbitrary. Just some bullshit projections where I, I just basically ranked them based on my confidence in the roster. Um, the Saints, especially with the aging of, um, I mean, you guys always have a good defense, but I certainly do believe that the offense is lacking. So um, you guys get the number one pick. And if you guys don't like being up so high, whoop de fucking do you guys get to enjoy having a good pick. You know what? Make me look like a fool later on, but enjoy Arch Manning for the time being. Granted, they might actually pull a Manning on this one because Papa Manning did not have a great time. But the new Saints organization is going to be different. Ended up in the last draft class getting Abdul Carter via a trade up and then also to Cario Davis via him slipping. So um, do love that because you get your young future piece at the edge rushing position and then you get a super versatile piece in the secondary. Then the Titans are still at number two and I'm just, you know, you could definitely argue for going after a quarterback here, but I'm just too in love with Ruben Bain Jr., uh, this guy is unbelievable. He's about that 275 pound frame. And this guy is up there. I mean, I think he might be edge one for me if he came out this class. So I think he's super duper special. We got T-Mac, we got Josh Connerly. I honestly don't think a rookie quarterback is necessarily required on this offense. And also, I don't really think right now that any of the quarterbacks are really number one quality. So don't force yourself by picking a quarterback when... You know, there's players that are actually going to change your franchise, go to free agency. You guys know the deal. Go best player available. This is also just basically to introduce you guys to some new players. But uh, with T-Mac, Connerly, and Ruben Bain, it's going to be a really, really good start for y'all. So moving on to number three with the New York Giants, they go Cam Williams. And you might say, Alex, Cam Williams is coming out in this most recent class. What are you talking about? Well, if you guys did not already watch that mock draft of trades video, I ended up basically taking to saying which guys I expected to return. And does this mean that I have some inside info? No. I mean, I wish, and maybe one of these days we'll get to that point. But I mean, all we can do is actually just say, hey, this guy's super young, first year starter. He's going to get an extra year and he's going to boost his draft stock. And I think the New York Giants would be very happy with a great right tackle here in the 2025 mock draft. They ended up getting Cam Ward, Darian Porter, as well as Anthony Belton. So Belton is going to be more of that flexible offensive line piece. You're getting a true starter here in Cameron Williams. Then Jalen Milrow returned and he ends up going to the New York Jets to accompany him is Will Johnson, Walter Nolan, and Kamari Ramsey, who is the, uh, I believe the last pick or the second to last pick in uh, the mock draft because you guys ended up trading up into the third round. Um, you guys did end up mentioning that you guys are apparently supposed to have a third round pick from the Lions. I am going to reserve my frustration with PFF for another time. Let's just enjoy the content. All right. So um, trust me, I have you guys don't have my quarrels with PFF, not actually um, having the integrity that we try to uphold here at Hail Mary Sports. But, uh, you know, as a one man show. Sometimes it's not easy to keep track of every single trade that happens, and that's why we pay for some premium subscriptions to be able to help us, but let's get on with it. Uh, Harold Perkins is our number five overall pick and going to the Las Vegas Raiders. It accompanies Shadur Sanders, Ricky White, Jonah Coleman, and Maxwell Hairston. I really love that combination of guys. Um, Harold Perkins is going to be pretty much your X Factor. I think that you can totally use him as both a linebacker as well as an edge rusher at his 220 to 230 pound frame. Uh, I think he could even add more weight and be a full-time edge rusher, which I think would be beneficial to him. I think he would have ended up being a top 20 player in this class if he actually did not get hurt this year. But another player who I ended up um, signaling as a returner and accompanying him pretty much a full offensive slate. And then Max Harrison, who ended up slipping. Then we got Caleb Downs to the Los Angeles Rams, uh, accompanying Arianti Urzuri, as well as Quinn Ewers in the third. I think the Rams are definitely going to have a reset year. I mean, obviously, there's some rumors about Cooper Cup. He almost got traded at the deadline. 
I mean, I don't know if it's like actually official, official. They almost got moved, but obviously he was in talks. So not necessarily a solidified future there for the Rams. Um, Matt Stafford's not getting any younger. The offensive line, Arianti Ursary will have a growth development period. I don't think he's like a day one, like holy shit starter. And, you know, again, um, you know, he still has a little bit of time to be able to continue growing and developing and change my mind. So I'm super excited for that. But uh, when you get Caleb Downs here, who is like literally one of the best defensive prospects that I've ever watched, like it just ended up becoming best player available. Defensive back sounds unsexy, but when you get Quinn Ewers to develop and then you got Caleb Downs and Arianti Ursary as a trio, I mean, call it a day. I mean, I'm super excited. Caleb Downs is someone who I actually ended up grading not realizing he was in 2026 and he would have been my safety number one this year. Then KC, Kevin Concepcion is uh, number seven pick there for the Carolina Panthers. Obviously love keeping these uh, Carolina boys there in the Carolinas. He accompanies James Pierce, Jedi Barron, and TJ Sanders getting some punchiness on that defensive side. Let's get a little bit of more flash and sexiness on the offensive side. KC Concepcion going to be grouping up there with Xavier Leggett as well as uh, Jalen Coker. I really like that young trio of wide receivers, and it continues helping out Bryce Young. I think you guys could be much better than this, but again, this is just complete fabrication of a draft order based on like just some hunches based on the draft order. So uh, I think that you guys built a strong defense in this past three-round mock draft, and now we actually get to focus heavily on the offense. Then at number eight, the Jaguars love to go after their big athletic edge rushers. LT Overton, who is uh, signaled as a returner, is going to be going right here. And I think this is going to be a really good pairing there with Tra uh, Travon Walker for the future. And, you know, it obviously fits a role that they have on that defense. And we'll see who the guy who's in charge is. But um, I see a lot of amazing picks here that I really fell in love with. Hunter, Nelson, Igbenosin, and Jake Slaughter. Uh, I think it's Jack Slaughter, not Jake. But ignore the typo. Um, but regardless, LT Overton would be pretty much pairing up with these guys who I think are going to be more year two uh, rise up guys, not necessarily uh, rise up as in uh, Atlanta, but you guys get what I'm saying. These guys who are going to take a big step in year number two rather than hello, motherfucking. I have a bo pet bunny that you guys ended up voting on me keeping and he's just being an absolute douchebag when I'm recording. But um, it's yeah, I mean, I think these guys are all going to be like year two starters and like they easily could be year one, but talking about effectively. So I think that even though the Jags are at number eight, you guys are actually in a position where you are basically um, trending up. And I think that's a great place to be. They get a player like LT Overton at number nine. Cardinal Tate goes to the Minnesota Vikings, not necessarily like the big splash pick that you guys probably are looking for. Um, if I were to suggest another player here, I would go Peter Woods because I know defensive interior is a big issue for you guys. But of course, free agency is going to be hitting and then. We'll see a ton of other issues, a ton of variables, but it's kind of fun to try to play around with what I would project would be the positions of need. And, you know, Carnell Tate pairing up as that third wide receiver there with Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson just kind of sounds like a cherry on the top. But I think that JJ McCarthy coming off injury is going to still have a little bit of a sluggish start, even though, you know, KOC has done a great job, even with Sam Darnold. Uh, I assume you guys are going to be going with your longer term option as uh, your starter and you know, it'll be a little bit of a slow start, but I have trust in Kevin O'Connell and getting a super weapon like Carnell Tate sounds like a great deal to me. Of course, he pairs up with Donovan Jackson and Jacob Parrish, who is a physical corner, who I think that um, that you guys will absolutely adore. Now, at number 10, we have the Seahawks. And, you know, with Will Campbell, Xavier Watts, I think those are two really key pieces. And I think you guys easily could switch this to be um, a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Like every single year, I fall in love with the Seahawks. And I hate to say it, you guys underwhelm. Like you guys are just outside the playoffs. And I think you're a team that could easily go 13 and four. Like I genuinely think that you guys are that good. But I mean, I don't see Gino getting any better. And I don't necessarily see the team in general continuing to be fully trend up. And I hope I'm wrong because I you know, I love the Seahawks. I mean, you guys are awesome. And I even have a pair of Seahawks shoes. Don't ask why. It was a poor business decision, a poor financial decision at that too. But you guys end up getting Will Campbell, who's going to be that great offensive line pick for guard in the short run, as well as tackle replacement. Um, not in the long, but in case of injury. And then Xavier Watts is going to be that uh, ball hawking defensive back that I like for you guys. But Nico Iyama Leava 
is going to be the pick here for you guys. A uh, young, athletic, high upside who could pretty much perfectly fit into a Geno Smith role. I think that would be a really good addition. And so I'm going to be pretty happy if he ends up going to the Seahawks first. Well, technically second quarterback off the board. So continuing on, we got Caden Proctor going to the uh, Cleveland Browns. We ended up getting Ashton Genty, Garrett Nussmeyer, Blake Miller, and Jalen Knoll in uh, the 2024, 2025 mock draft. There we go. We're already into 2026. This is fucking unbelievable. But Caden's been doing a fantastic job there for Bama. I mean, he he's just been like rock solid since he come in. So, I mean, I think that there certainly is a future with him, Dewan Jones, Jedrick Wills, probably not going to be there next year. Um, and then Jack Conklin, the future is up in the air, but also Dewan Jones, not necessarily healthy. I think Caden Proctor just brings a solid foundation of experience, but also youth. And, um, you know, I know that didn't work last time you drafted the first round Alabama tackle with Jedrick Wills. And it kind of did. Jedrick Wills talent wise, I think it's fine. Um, it's just, you know, price tag, health, et cetera, that, uh, you know, will change your opinion versus, you know, whether a player is actually good or not. But being able to have that offensive focus with Garrett Nussmeyer taking a big step up and, you know, Blake Miller being that right tackle that could also be in there for, uh, you know, he's a backup guy. So don't really think about that as uh, someone who can take over Caden Proctor. But, you know, being able to have that safety net is super duper key. Then at number 12, we got Francis Maui Goa going to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, in their 2025 mock draft, we ended up going Kenneth Grant, Kyle Kennard, and Xavier Restrepo. And Restrepo, honestly, is just the perfect receiver to pair up with Michael Wilson as well as Marvin Harrison Jr. Kyle Kennard and Kenneth Grant, I mean, you guys know I'm a sucker for defensive line for the Cardinals. So now we can end up actually getting a top tier right tackle that could end up growing with Paris Johnson as a young duo going forward. Um, Maui Go has been fantastic this year. And, um, you know, he's just super duper young. His brother, uh, I think, what is it? I'm forgetting what his brother's name is, but he's the linebacker for the U as well. He does a fantastic job, but being able to upgrade the offensive line with an over 98% efficiency pass blocker here is going to be a really good way to start because he's super young. He's also used to mobility, and I think he's going to take a big step up. Then at number 13, we have Nick Harbour going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He joins Jalen Walker, Jihad Campbell, and Denzel Burke. A very defensive heavy draft, but with Mike Evans going to be gone at that point, being able to get someone who is the only 99, or at least at launch, the only 99 speed receiver in NCAA who also has an extreme amount of size and like the dude's built like an absolute freight train. Um, you guys are going to be in good hands. I mean, he literally is a sprinter there for Carolina like South Carolina. And so you're getting that at an extremely physical frame. And I think that he's just underproduced for how damn talented he is. But you got your defense fixed up in 2025. Start focusing on the offense there in 2026. Ben Morrison is next. I mean, he was another guy who I designated as a returner. He was my number three player and then ended up leaving for um, the year with a hip injury. So He'll be a true senior at this point, could go much higher than this, but I think it's just a dream fit there for the Colts. He's going to join Colson Loveland, Nick Eben, Worry, Jack Kaiser, Quincy Riley, and Braden Swinson. Uh, Quincy Riley is someone who probably even could be a defensive back, so you got a lot of flexibility there with Quincy, who's had a bit of a rough year, but um, you know, you're getting a, a lot of quality talent here. Jack Kaiser, not necessarily super popular, but someone who I really like. Braden Swinson, he has like a 20% pass rush win rate and his wins are beautiful. And then of course, Quincy does have those big physical plays, but he also is someone who needs more time to be consistent. Ben Morrison's an absolute stud. And I think that I'm not a big guy on Juju Brents. You guys know how much I loved uh, Jalen Jones, but I think Ben Morrison's a true corner one and it doesn't hurt to continue cycling in good top end defensive back talent. Then we got to go to the Broncos with London Humphreys. Uh, London Humphreys is dynamic playmaker, man. I just totally see Sean Payton deploying this guy both like with the jet sweeps, being able to put him as a running back on certain plays, and then obviously as a bigger deep threat. Not bigger in terms of like actually like size, but he's just not Marvin Mims. Um, and I'm trying to remember what his exact height is, but I think he's around that like 6'2 mark. But Forgive me if I'm wrong about that. Regardless, London Humphreys has played a massive role there for Georgia, and it's very underrated. I mean, you got Dylan Bell there who has that bigger frame. I think he's like, what, 6'3", 210. And, you know, you got, um, I'm trying to remember, Colby Young. I love Colby Young. I don't know what the hell's going on with him, but 
Uh, you know, then Oscar Delve, but London Humphreys is that just like underrated playmaker, which funnily enough, he kind of seems a little bit more Lad McConkey esque. And well, you're seeing Lad McConkey in your own division. If you can't beat him, join him. Uh, London Humphreys is also going to be joining Tyler Warren on offense, which is literally my dream fit for like my that's my favorite pick if it does happen to the Broncos. Like it would be probably my favorite fit in the entire draft. Then you also have Caleb Johnson, a hard nosed running back. And then you got Charles Grant, who Sean Payton ended up loving uh, Taron Armstead, who is an extreme athletic freak. Charles Grant from William Mary is that too. Then we have Tyler Booker for the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, just a real quality offensive guard with offensive tackle potential. However, you don't really need to focus on the tackle potential because you have Josh Simmons, who we traded back multiple. If you guys, you guys need to watch the video just to watch my fucking masterclass on the on the Patriots. But I traded back multiple times and still got Josh Simmons because I'm like, hey, this is my true left tackle. I'm not going to play any damn games and try to get this guard tackle hybrid. So ended up getting Josh Simmons, a plethora of picks. Ended up leveraging like those extra third round picks and, and you know, I had an extra second round pick to be able to focus on Princely Uman Mielin to fix that edge up, to be able to fix the running back core with or Marion Hampton. And remember, you might say like, Alex, like what the hell is going on here? This is a great group of guys, but you got to focus on wide receiver earlier. Um, as Ryan Thomas, you guys know how much I love him. He ended up slipping just because like corners just didn't go as fast as I expected. And then Jaden Higgins as well. But I projected T Higgins to be signed. So that's the big thing. T. Higgins is signed in this equation as well. So you could add him to the draft class. And then you have Tyler Booker. So it's Josh Simmons, Tyler Booker. I mean, just talk about a way to revamp your team. Like this would be like the A++ draft that you could like Azariah Thomas is a corner fucking two. Like with Christian Gonzalez would be absolutely nuts. So you guys absolutely hit a home run. This is probably my favorite mock draft I think I've ever done for any single team. And, um, you know, it kind of sucks that it just did ended up being me just sitting on a couch while a game's going on in the background, just fiddling around with this rather than you guys seeing me do it live. But uh, still fun to do that instead. At number 17, we have the Washington Commanders going after Spencer Fano. And, you know, this guy's actually been doing a fantastic job. He has like a 90 plus run block grade as well. This guy's been absolutely locked down and he's super young. Um, he actually only has like one good picture on the entire internet for me to use. And I ended up almost giving up hope on being able to find a good picture for Spencer Fano in this image. But brother had it hidden and we ended up finding it. But yes, offensive tackle play is going to be super key for the future. Jaden Daniels at LSU had two legitimate college uh, offensive tackles there at Emory Jones, which let's not talk about Emory this year. Emory 2023 was absolutely baller. And then Will Campbell as well. So Spencer Fauna has been doing a fantastic job. Washington needs to continue improving their offensive tackle talent. But um, added to Spencer Fauna is Luther Burden, Donovan Zeruwaku, and Jermari Harris. Um, technically multiple top 32 guys. Jamari Harris, again, part of that cornerback slip, but Donovan Zeruwaku, an extremely talented edge rusher out of BC. We saw a ton of issues all at once. And Jamari, who I think needs to have good mentorship, being able to be trained up by Marshawn Lattimore. For the Dolphins, they end up getting their tight end in Luke Hodge. Uh, this dude is absolutely phenomenal. He's been balling out since the first time I watched him play for Arkansas. Um, you know, you guys know me. I love Andrew Armstrong. And then it's like Luke Hodge. Like there's those guys are just absolutely fantastic. And I think that with the deployment that you guys have had with Johnu Smith, this makes a ton of sense. Um, you know, just someone who's really solid after the catch. He's a bigger guy, not necessarily in terms of like total weight. He's not like a 270 pounder, but like he's just, he's a real, he's a bigger receiver, right? Like, I don't think that Luke Hodge is necessarily going to be someone who I necessarily put in a Darnell Washington role, but that's not something that you guys need. You need a Johnny Smith role, which I think Luke Hodge could end up adapting well to. But in the first round, you traded up and got Malachi Starks and then ended up getting Derek Harmon in the second. And then Xavier Trust is a flexible, he's a tackle right now, but I think he's a beautiful, amazing guard at six foot seven, which is a weird frame, but a really, really good guard. And people do not give him the love he deserves. I know that the Dolphins are a team to sometimes take a little bit of a crazy pick at the end of the third, which... I mean, I'm thinking of Channing Tindall, for example. It's not a crazy pick, but not necessarily the overly polished day one starter from Georgia. I think that Xavier Truss could be very similar in that mindset. Then we got number 19, the Dallas Cowboys, who just sneak into the playoffs, selecting Jaden Roberts. That right guard spot is going to need filling. I think Jaden Roberts, part of that retain, returning group in the past video, is going to be a massive, 
massive riser. I uh, heard some news about some arthritis in his hand. I don't have a source for that. Someone ended up mentioning it, but um, that could end up being why he has his random struggles this year. But the top end play is ridiculous. He's literally known as the number one weightlifter in the Alabama locker room. And so if you can end up training him to actually be a good offensive lineman, which I've definitely seen the potential with him, I totally think you can end up getting a massive, massive steal here. But uh, we ended up trading up for Mason Graham, which I thought was absolutely awesome. Then you got Quinchad Judkins in the third, as well as Kyron Lacey to be an all do all around wide receiver, which I really did like to be able to have that flexibility in terms of where Kyron can play in the slot boundary, do whatever the hell that you want with him. So continuing on, we got the Los Angeles Chargers going TJ Parker here. We focus pretty heavily on offensive line. We got Isaiah Bond, Harold Fannin, as well as Gray Zabel, by the way, Gray Zabel who's a left tackle, probably going to be kicked to the inside, even to center. Talk about a perfect guy for Harbaugh. Like, that's just like, to me, I just saw that. Like, you got it. Like, that's a fit. And so, like, you get your top end tight end that you guys know Harbaugh loves, athletic tight ends. And then Isaiah Bond just stretching the field. But now you got TJ Parker as well, who he even was featured in a stock report this year. Um, and I think that's phenomenal. TJ Parker I think what well, he's like 6'3", 275. This dude's an absolute savage. And you guys need to continue adding there because Tuli Tupelotu can't do it all by himself going forward. At number 21, we got Tao Johnson to the Bears. So I ended up being getting a little crazy with the Chicago Bears here. Of course, we did that trade back with Miami that gave us some extra picks, but we ended up actually trading up again as well. So we ended up trading back and getting Kelvin Banks. He could end up being a guard, end up being a tackle, depending on what Kron Amagaji can do. Or you could talk about Braxton Jones as well. I know that a lot of people brought that up. Jonas Savania is going to be our center. He ended up playing guard or tackle if you need him to as well. He's a right tackle who's now playing left tackle. But a lot of people say based on um, his projections at the start of the year, he's a center. Jalen Rawls is a snipe in the second round because, well, he ended up having a foot injury, which put him out for the year. But he's going to be back for the Senior Bowl. Um, Ryan Poles likes to attend the Senior Bowl. And Jalen Rawls is an absolutely dominant threat, especially after the catch. It might be in the four threes. Then you got Omar Norman Lott. He's just an extra in the third round. I mean, first off, the Bears, Zach Pickens, third round pick early. Uh, I can totally see the same thing with Omar Norman Lott. He just has limited reps, but he's been fantastic through those limited reps. And that's probably the reason why he is still a day two pick. But speaking of someone who's been fantastic on his reps, Josiah Stewart was a snipe at the end of the third. He's just someone at 6'1, 245. Not necessarily going to be in a projectable build, but it's going to be for a team that's willing to try to test to see if that can work. Uh, I think they're going to get an absolute steal. Josiah Stewart was a my guy at the start of the year, and he's going to still be that right now. But the Bears can end up getting someone to be basically an understudy to Daryl Taylor for the long run and uh, Montez Sweat, of course. Then we have the Texans. I ended up getting our third defensive back up, Marcus Ratcliffe here. Uh, joining Wyatt Milam, Ty Felton, as well as Alfred Collins. So address the guard and defensive interior, the offensive and defensive line questions. And then I ended up getting really good value on Ty Felton that I honestly thought you didn't really have. I thought he added a little bit of a size component in terms of height over Tank Dell's role. I think that Nico Collins has a little bit more size to him, but not necessarily. I mean, the route running prowess of Nico Collins is phenomenal, but I think that Ty Felton adds another nifty route runner and, you know, it's just, he's been absolutely dominant this year. And I think that when I was in that position drafting Ty Felton, I knew I would take him to the Bills. And I'm like, dude, I just do not want to face the Bills with Ty Felton. It's just like, you can't do that. You got to force the Bills not to get an instant Amari Cooper replacement. And of course, Alfred Collins mentioned that we wanted to end up fixing both the lines um, on offense and defense. Then somehow Green Bay goes after a wide receiver. I just want to go best player available. Denzel Boston fell way too far. Just that's, that's the thing. Donzel Boston fell way too freaking far. And I didn't really see many other um, talents that I liked remotely close to Denzel Boston at the moment. And you guys have Siobhan Ravel, Micah Green, and Dante Corleone. I mean, like killer draft on defense. Got to focus on the offensive side. And, you know, going best player available seemed to be the right decision for me. Then at number 24 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, we ended up going Peter Woods. Uh, you know, you need that Cam Hayward replacement for the long run. And Peter Woods is an absolute savage. I mean, this guy pops up left, right, and center. He's going to join Drew Alar, who's going to be on that fifth-year contract, probably going to be coming to his first year starting. Elik Iomainer, who is an absolute snipe round two. And Zai Alexander, who could be a both a corner as well as a safety. And I think that that flexibility is going to be super useful in the defense. But Peter Woods, too good to pass on at 24. At 25, we got Anthony Donko, tackle, right tackle. 
out of Penn State. This guy's actually been doing a really good job pass blocking efficiency wise, um, taking big steps up. And I know that you guys have been asking for a more efficient pass blocker at right tackle over Caleb McGarry. And so I thought this was going to be the perfect opportunity to do so. Based on current projections, I could probably see him going much higher than this, but um, he's going to be joining JT Tuimalau and Lathan Ransom to help out that defense. So a little bit more of an offensive focus this time. At number 26, we got Rutgers receiver here and Ian Strong, of course, and and I ended up having um, T. Higgins go to the New England Patriots. And so I wanted to go after a receiver that I thought could bring a little bit of physicality to the table. And Ian Strong at the moment, based on the current draft class projections, is on average, I think the highest, especially in a larger sample size, the highest contested catch percentage wide receiver on the market. And this dude's been doing a phenomenal job. And looking at the way that we did the last draft, he joins Nick Scorton, uh, Tyleek Williams, as well as Marcus Bowe, full, like full focus on the lines. Now we can end up looking a little bit elsewhere. And I think Ian Strong would be a nice addition. Then we got Kevin Coleman, last chance of you. Was he last chance of you? I know he's a JUCO transfer, but Kevin Coleman's been chopping it up there at Mississippi State. I don't know if he comes out this year or not, but I'm going to take advantage of it for the time being. He joined Shamar Stewart, Jack Sawyer, and Tate Ratledge there for the Lions. Uh, Jack Sawyer was just too good to pass on, and I was just like, why the hell not? I mean, like, talk about a steal of the draft. Uh, but, I mean, when I saw him available for the Lions in the third, I'm like, shit. And apparently that third round pick might go to the Jets. And to be fair, the Jets could probably use it on Jack Sawyer. But I mean, I'm just going to leave that out there. We're going to enjoy the mock for the time being. We're going to get everything clarified as soon as I pray to God. PFF steps their quality up a little bit. Then we got Trey Zoon going to the Baltimore Ravens. He's super young and he's had some really good flashes. Needs to improve that anchor. Dallas Turner sat him on his ass a couple times when he faced him a year ago. But um, you know, he joins Trey Amos, Trey Harris, back-to-back -back Ole Miss boys, and Ashton Gillette. So focusing on the offensive line in this instance when we ended up focusing more on the flashy positions in the year before. And number 29, we have the Buffalo Bills going David Bailey. Like this dude, efficiency-wise, is the best pass rusher in the country. He's just about 240 pounds, and he has a little bit more of a limited role. David Bailey, though, has been literally on fire, 92 PFF grade on the year. I think he's going to be, um, I mean, he's somebody who I ended up having as a developmental edge rusher. And I think that that could end up being the case, but multiple years of being probably the most efficient edge rusher might be able to overlook some of those other concerns. He also joins Dion Walker, Tyler Barron, and Kevin Winston Jr., three difference makers on the defense and all steals respectively where they're at. At number 30, we got Teague Anderson. A uh, young offensive tackle there for Utah State. I, I promise you that's the best image I could find of him. That was a pain in the ass to find too. But he joins Michael Williams, Armand Membu, who I want to be kicked to the inside of the offensive line, but also have that flexibility for the tackle role in the long. And Dalen Everett. I just thought this was the prime opportunity to be able to get a legitimate high-end offensive tackle. If Armand Membu can work, kick Teague or Armand to left tackle once you have a little bit more of a certainty that Trent is going to be gone. Uh, Teague Anderson did, has been doing a phenomenal job this year, so I want to give him the credit that he deserves. At number 31, we got Jabe, Gabe Jacos going to the Philadelphia Eagles. They got Cayman Rucker, Emery Jones, Barrett Carter, and Mason Taylor as well. I think that there's just going to be a little bit of a focus on a larger edge rusher. Jabe, Gabe Jacos is over 270 pounds, where Cayman Rucker might be 265. He's more of a standard stand-up type of guy, and I think that he could be used in a little bit more versatile way. Gabe Jacos is just extremely flexible, and his true freshman season, he even popped off to the Discord group. Shout out to you guys. But um, yeah, you now have Cayman Rucker, Gabe Jacos, and again, you got Nolan Smith, who hasn't really fully proven to do much. Um, I mean, I love Nolan, but I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's a first-round pick. He's not filling the role that he was drafted for. And then Jalex Hunt is super developmental. He's a former safety who definitely needs more time. And then Josh Sweat going to be gone. BG going to be gone. So it really is going to be, I mean, you got, you know, I mean, you ended up um, bringing on Bryce Huff, but Bryce Huff has even had a little bit of a slow start. I do think that edge rusher is going to be a key position to target. But you also have Emery Jones, who's going to be that right guard for you guys. You can end up potentially training into a right tackle, but in the third round, I thought it was too damn good of value. I ended up trading back. That was not a second round pick, which is why we ended up having these other picks. Barrett Carter joining uh, Jeremiah Trotter and Mason Taylor, who's a, actually a really good route runner there for LSU, potentially an understudy for Dallas Goddard. And lastly, at number 32, we do have the Chiefs, and they go Oscar Delp, who I'm hoping to have a bounce back year next year because he's flashed it this year at the end, but 
um, not consistent enough to be drafted the way that maybe he deserves to. He joins Emeka Abuka, Landon Jackson, as well as Daryl Jackson Jr. to kind of be able to have a well-rounded approach on defensive line as well as weaponry. So that's going to be the video. You guys kind of got a day two mock draft as well as the 2026 way too early all in one. I love you guys. See you on the far side. Peace.